Hello Rotor Grinders, I'm Brett Hartfield, better known as Killa B2482, and I'm here to break down my week six tournament lineup over on DraftKings. So let's dive in. Uh, all right, so here you can see I comboed up Andrew Luck and T.Y. Hilton. Uh, loved the low percentage on Andrew Luck at only 1% in the million maker. So uh, he's coming off his shoulder injury, kind of assumed that the low ownership here. And then just love the situation. Highest over under of the slate at 55 could be a potential shootout game. Uh, and he definitely didn't disappoint. 312 passing yards, got that 300 yard bonus. Uh, throw in three passing touchdowns with a 35 yard uh yards on the ground which is awesome so um and then we paired him up with ty now uh you know with the emergence of moncrief and luck's propensity to spread the ball around you can make an argument for rolling out a naked luck lineup but just loved uh hilton's ceiling potential here in a in a shootout game uh he's also had over 10 more targets than anyone else on the team so uh surprised only uh 3.4 percent owned in the millionaire maker and uh, returned a, a good amount here. Uh, six catches, 74 yards with, with a touchdown. His first touchdown of the season. So really like that. Now moving on to running back here, C.J. Anderson. This was a total buy low situation on a, a, a guy that was also in a, a plus, plus matchup. So against a Cleveland defense that's just been really porous. Uh, for, at 4,500, I was just hoping, all right, uh, you know Denver's offensive philosophy here is going to be to run the run the ball, uh, especially the their wind was really strong in Cleveland, 15 to 20 mile per hour wind throughout the game. Uh, unfortunately for us, uh, you know Ronnie Hillman got most of the work on the ground here, so uh, we got a total of 66 yards, four catches. Uh, you know. I was hoping for a, a, a bigger bounce back game here, but that's uh, that's fine. Uh, and then Deion Lewis. Uh, this is a play that I was loving throughout the week uh, until he popped up on the injury list with an abdomen injury. Um, you know, people who have rostered Deion Lewis have noticed a few things that he's only really used in three quarters. Uh, you know, the fir out of the first five weeks anyways. Uh, here I was hoping we'd get a closer game, possibly get four quarters of usage. So his ceiling was pretty high here for me uh, when I was analyzing the games. Uh, but, you know, LeGarrette Blount was really effective in the first quarter, second quarter, and then just was used, you know, high amount in the second half here. So, I mean, that, that was a situation where if LeGarrette gets stuffed in the first quarter, we're going to see a lot of Deion Lewis. But unfortunately for us, uh, you know, uh, he was he was effective throughout the game. Uh, this is the biggest disappointment. Uh, 39 total yards, three catches. So, uh, moving on to wide receivers, Kelvin Johnson. Uh, Kelvin was in a great situation here, home against the Bears. I mean, gotta love that. Uh, and he was coming off one of the tougher stretches for a wide receiver. He had Arizona, Seattle, and Denver in his last three games. So, uh, you know, coming off on three games where he definitely wasn't uh, getting uh, his normal production. It uh, felt like he'd be lower owned and at 11.6%. Uh, uh, I love that ownership too. And uh, came through 166 receiving yards, six catches, had a receiving touchdown also. So I uh, love that. Uh, Mike Wallace here. Uh, wow. Yeah, no Charles Johnson really made me love Mike Wallace throughout the week. Um, he's been receiving the lion's share of targets through the first what, five weeks for Minnesota. Now, Minnesota is definitely a run first team, but they were playing a Kansas City defense that's been a, a funnel defense all, all year. They've been stout against the run and they shut down Adrian Peterson, which I was hoping for. Uh, but I didn't expect Stefan Diggs to take over the feature role. Uh, only two catches, 23 yards. Ugh, looking for something better than that. <laughs> So, all right, and then moving on to tight end, Jordan Cameron. Uh, one of the most talented tight ends in the league uh, for me uh, at only 3K. Uh, love that. Um, and, you know, he's going to be one of my favorite GPP tight ends every week at this price. Uh, he returned return value, three catches, 30 yards. Uh, saved saved it uh, with the touchdown here. So, well, we'll take we'll take the 12 points at 3K all day. So, And then at flex, uh, we had Julian Edelman. Uh, didn't mind having exposure here to two Patriot players. Uh, they're the highest scoring team on the slate. Um, and you know, he was my favorite wide receiver of the week and you got a discount here, $1,600 less than Julio Jones, uh, got off to a great start four catches, 43 yards, uh, and a touchdown, uh, but did something to that pinky where he dislocated it, something where he was not effective. He had a lot of drops on the next few drives. 
And then he was only targeted once in the second half. So uh, looked like it could have been a monster game, but the the pinky injury really faded him out of that offense. Um, and then moving on to defense, the Jets defense. Uh, loved a bunch of defenses this week, but had the most shares of the Jets defense, mainly because lowest over under uh, of the slate here. And then uh, Kirk Cousins. You got to love it when uh, your defense is going up against a Kirk Cousins-led offense. So, um, so overall, we had a... Uh, Total of 138.98 DK points. Uh, definitely, definitely wasn't good enough to break cash uh, in any of my leagues. Um, but you know, I, I did have a lot of Stafford and uh, Calvin Johnson, so don't feel too bad for me. Um, hopefully, you guys also had the Stafford uh, Calvin uh, lineup this week because that was that was the nut combo. Um, and uh, moving on to next week, I guess week seven. So uh, good luck to you guys. Thank <laughs> you.